Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Defending the Early Years podcast. Today, I'm excited to bring a guest who you may have seen online, and I know I've seen online, TikTok, Facebook, she does it all. Um, (laughs) Wonderful advocacy through videoing and chatting and giving tips, short tips and guidance to other early educators, parents, families, anybody who loves children. She runs a program called Kid Crew Adventures, love the name. It is a home-based center located in Oak Park, Illinois, and her name is Kisa. Hello, Kisa. Welcome to the Defending the Early Years podcast. Hi, Kisha. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm really, really, really excited. I know that you have so much to say because I love watching your (laughs) videos and I love seeing your kids go on their adventure. So I want to start by uh, learning a little bit about you. Like, where did this... um, where did this come from? Like what, what even made you decide to open up a program in your home and to work with young children? So um, my story started out over 25 years ago. I have three adult children now and I was in school to become a teacher. As my oldest son entered uh, daycare, there were so many issues with him because he was born prematurely. He had high sensitivities and he would cry a lot. And so the daycare center, their way to handle it was not do nurturing or anything environmental. They would just call and send him home, but I was a working mom. So I would have to either leave my job or my sister would have to come get him. So that made me start to volunteer when I volunteered, I just observed a very negative trend. The, a lot of the workers did not want to be there. A lot of them um, uh, were very vocal about not wanting to be there. They did not know what to do with the children, how to um, treat them in a caring, respectful way. And that made me start to volunteer more at the school, my, the center my son attended. And little by little, it just started changing my mind. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't continue on this path to be a, a, a grade school educator. Maybe the issue is in, in, in early education. So that rerouted everything. I started taking early education classes and um, special education classes. I grew more. I learned more. And all of a sudden the seed was planted and I no longer wanted to be a school teacher. I wanted to be a daycare provider. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, early educator stories start with their own children, right? And seeing seeing it firsthand as a parent. But Mm -hmm. what's interesting about your story is that you were in the environment with early educators and you could see the issues that Mm -hmm. so many programs are suffering from, especially right now with the staffing shortage. So I really give you kudos for making that shift and, and, and still to this day working to right those wrongs. Yes. Yes. And even as I've shifted now, my story is changing because I've been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. And now the story is switching in the same vein. It's like, I've watched long enough to see what's wrong in as a provider when you have academic based care. And I'm shifting in a new direction because I can see what's not serving the children anymore and how and, and the need to grow and go in another direction. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think a lot of people who've been working this, in this field, as long as you and I have, have a hard time doing. Yeah. They have to grapple with the fact that maybe what we have noticed or have been doing or have experienced isn't what's best for children. So making that shift is like a a coming to terms with the fact that maybe there's a better way. And I think that's hard for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It really is. It took a lot. Um, It's a grieving process. You have to let go of so much that you you really honestly thought was right and have to, you know, come to terms with the fact that, no, this, this helped class management. 
this may have helped you in your own ego way. Like I have a certain amount of control and things like that, but this did not serve the children. And so I had to let it go in order to actually serve them. And what would you say was your catalyst for your latest change? Like what sparked that, um, that ball rolling? What started that ball rolling down uh, this new avenue that you're going down? So uh, there, there were several things. Intuitively, there was just, um, I'm, I have these very vivid dreams and I would constantly have this recurring dream about mm -hmm what I could do for the children or what wasn't working. And it was always the same thing. It's like the kids uh, where my environment, my real life environment was very happy and, and the kids were playful. Um, but I would have this dream where the kids were like crying and miserable and there was something wrong, always, always. So I would wake up and, and try to visualize what I could do differently, but everything seemed to be working. So there was that little seed that was always there. Then the pandemic hit. When the pandemic hit, you know, we, we couldn't go out. We couldn't go on field trips. Uh, we couldn't go to the park. Um, most of my kids were at home, the ones that weren't, um, their parents weren't uh, first responders. And um, I mean, essential workers, excuse me. And I was just like, we have to figure out something we have to find a plan where the kids can take on as little trauma as possible and um, feel safe and comfortable in this very new world that we're creating. And once I did that, I was like, you know what? I have a very small backyard. I'm gonna take them outside and I'm gonna create something for them. And really what my mind was thinking is I'm gonna create the past. So when you were a little kid, you could just go outside and use your imagination. Mm -hmm. And so I thought back to what I did. I was a very imaginative kid and I started doing that. Now, going back to me being, um, having that intuition, once we went outside, I started to observe a total change in the child's behavior. Now, these are children that I've kept for years, but all of a sudden, I'm hearing them speak in a different way. Um, they're telling me things that they hadn't told me before. They, it's like they came alive. Yes. yes. And so yes. that made me think, oh, you're on to something. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to keep going. Mm -hmm. Kisa, it's so funny how your story and my story parallel each other in so many ways. It's yeah. just, I'm listening to you and I'm like, Yes. 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 Children. Yes. Even down to your dreams. Like mm -hmm. I have the most vivid dreams and mm. they're like, it's weird. It's like they're pictures of the past and pictures of the future. And they yes. really guide me a lot. So hearing mm -hmm. you say that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's creepy. We do. That's the same. But yes. yes. And the children yeah. tell us they do when we listen. Right. So yes. Uh, when we're when we're listening and when we're open to receiving their messages, they clearly mm -hmm. tell us what they need. So is, did you have a different name before you started making this shift? Did you change the name of your program? I did. I did. My mom gave me my name when I first opened the daycare and it was Kisa Kid Care and it was with three K's. We didn't even realize until we oh. shortened it that it was KKK. We were like, oh, we have to change that. So it became KKC. Um, and then once I started to notice the shift in the children, I was like, you know what? I'm not, these kids are leading me. So there, it doesn't feel genuine anymore for my name to be in front of this. Mm -hmm. So I made it, it's their adventure. So I made it Kid Career Adventures. Oh, I love that explanation. <laughs> wow. So what I notice um, you sharing a lot is your outings, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. outings about town. So tell us a little bit more about that, because I think that um, for most of us, I think for me, at least it's a goal has always been a goal. We did a little bit more of it before COVID and we're hoping to shift back a little bit to being able to, to go outside of the campus of the school. But um, I think people would be inspired to hear that it is, it's possible. And yeah. um, it's the children are worthy of being a normal. The biggest thing for me is just normalized children hanging out 
around town and like experiencing yeah. the place where they live. So you want to tell me a little bit about some of the adventures that you guys go on and um, what that's like? Yes. So this is my favorite thing. We, um, Oak Park has about the 75,000 people. So it's a pretty big village. Um, and we've been on the other side of town, both sides of town uh, now over the last 13 years. The one thing that has stayed the same is my community involvement. It's very important, not for us to just be like in a fishbowl and you all know, oh, that house down the street has a daycare. It's very important for, for those kids to know the people on my block, to know the people in the restaurant down the street, the florist and everyone else, because this is their community. And we can't just say it and make it sound pretty. You have to actually be an active part of your community. And so I always wanted them outside. Even when we weren't doing the adventures that we're doing now, we were always getting to know our neighbors, getting to know the mailman, because those are people you're going to run into. And I, I don't want, when, when we teach children, it's always about stranger danger. Don't talk to them. Don't go there. Don't do this. I didn't want it to be like that. I want you to literally know that there are helpers right here. If something happens to Miss Kisa, you know that Miss Shayla next door will help you. You know the people that are right around you and who, 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 did, who you can trust in your village. So that was very important to me is that they just go outside and be mm -hmm. and let the people around them just be. And that's, it's really just grown from there. And does the community <laughs> embrace you guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. I had um, the place that we just moved from, we had a teacher and a psychologist next door and they would come and go and they were kind of apprehensive when we first moved in. She was like, oh God, it's a daycare <laughs> next door to us. And one day the gentleman, Steve came out and he said, I leave my windows open because hearing those children laugh is a delight. Mm -hmm. and there's mm -hmm. some of my closest friends on the block there I was just at her house we moved down the street now and I just went over her house yesterday I keep her dog we became good friends and she actually became a part of my community oh, she addressed auntie. herself for my children as an auntie oh I love yeah. that <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so yes they do embrace us and um you want to be genuine with people and you want, yes, children are loud. Uh, children do uh, quarrel and have, you know, bicker back and forth. And there might be tears sometimes, but this is all human behavior. And this is it. Just like you hear them cry, you're going to hear them laugh. Exactly. I think that's some of the most important work that we can do is normalize childhood. Like we've, yes. we've all been children, but we have this childhood amnesia. We forget about it. We yeah. <laughs> forget what it's like and suddenly we we want to redefine childhood as you know many adults and we have expectations mm -hmm. attached to that that are not appropriate so you know and it's really problematic it really yeah. is yeah just the other day I was in a restaurant um we were sitting outside they had a little back patio area and a bunch of you know people were were sitting out there but my husband and I sat kind of away from everyone and mm -hmm. there were two kids, maybe one was probably like kindergarten, first grade, and the other one was preschool age. And mm -hmm. they left their family's table and they're running around where we were sitting. And the mom was like, you know, you could tell she was really nervous and really mm -hmm. um, stressed about it and calling them back. And I just looked over to her and I said, they are fine. It is not bothering me one bit. It was so hard for her to allow them to be be children in that space. I mean, the whole, the space was calling for children to run around and play. It was a big like backyard area and we were sitting in one little corner of it. So right. um, I try as much as I can when I'm in situations like that to remind parents that it is okay for your child to be themselves around me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it'd be nice if, you know, that could be the norm, right? Making space it where it, they're designed for humans of all ages, of mm -hmm. all stages, um, just like we diversify um, spaces for 
people with special needs or mm -hmm. um, disabilities. We mm -hmm. diversify spaces and places for children of, of people of different races and religions and mm -hmm. ways of living. We should also be thinking about that in terms of different ages, older people, yes. and younger people, like really yeah. making spaces that are universal. When, oh, I'm sorry for cutting no, in. No, go ahead, go ahead. What that brings to mind is just the restaurant. If those kids hadn't been there and it was just an all adult setting, it's going to be diverse. They're going to be the people that are quiet talkers. They're going to be the people who really aren't speaking at all because maybe it's a little tense going on over there. <laughs> They're going to be the loud cacklers that are having just the greatest time ever and everyone knows it and it's all okay. But somehow when you put children in the mix, mm -hmm. it's taboo for them to have varying behavior. Mm -hmm. that, is, and, that is totally true. Yeah. And the first thing that a, a tense adult will say is like, you know better. No, you know better. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. We should know better. <laughs> yeah. As a, society, as a society, we should know better. That yes. children have a culture of their own. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, and so, it has to be normalized. So, where you are in your program, mm -hmm. um, how have the parents uh, adjusted to this change? Like, how, 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 um, separated was it? Like, from doing it one way to doing it another way, was it like, you know, a long stretch of time where you kind of eased into it? Or did you wake up one day after having a dream and saying, by golly, we're making changes? <laughs> <laughs> I am a very um, a fine, detailed, tweaking type of person. So I, I go in inches. I'm the inchworm, right? Mm -hmm. But this here, <laughs> yeah. going to play based and in what we have done over the last year, that was just a jolt for everyone. I was just like, we're changing directions, guys. Mm -hmm. And luckily, luckily, my parents were probably saying all types of things behind my back, but they trusted <laughs> me enough <laughs> to say, okay, we'll go along with you. And <laughs> there's something to be said for that because you really are, it's, you're going in a different direction than what most of society is going in. Oh right? yeah. So as yeah. a parent, that is scary. But like yeah. you said, the relationship and the trust that they have in you, they know that you love their child. Yeah. Helps with that transition. But yeah, yeah. I I understand the 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 switch that flicks because it's almost like once you know better, you do better. And it's hard to not do it. You yeah, I just couldn't like, not do it. Yep. Yeah. I couldn't do it slowly. I just had to go forward. Yep. And you just know that there's so much greatness in that direction. So mm -hmm. you want to run towards it. You know, you don't want yeah. to tiptoe. You want to run mm -hmm. towards it. And the mm -hmm. children just eat it up. Like as soon as <laughs> it's it takes a little bit for them to understand, like, okay. What's going on with Miss Kisa? She's losing yep. it. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, it's different. They're kind of skeptical at first. They're like, okay, what's going on? And then when they believe, it's like a process of believing, right? A process yes. of believing. When they start to believe, I I was actually writing about this this morning. The that process of the process that they go through, where they have to like believe in their own intrinsic motivation and believe. Mm -hmm. And, and nestle themselves in the autonomy that they now have and mm -hmm. figure out what to do with those original thoughts and trusting that, oh, well, I can have an idea and my voice can be heard in such a different way. And I think the reason why we don't, we did, like, like you said, um, when you started to shift, they were telling mm -hmm. you different things and you heard different things and you mm -hmm. heard different voices. I think yeah. it's because now we have time to listen. We have time to listen and I just want to put a pin in that because when it comes back to nature, it's the same thing. We have time to see it. it it's just the same. It's hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. These kids have been saying the same thing, but we have time to hear them and listen. And it makes a total difference. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first started to shift, you said they were thinking Ms. Keese is going crazy. It was yeah. just like, they would come in and they would say, what are we doing today? Yep. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And I just stood back and was like, what do you think you should do? Mm -hmm. yep. 
and they were just looking at me like, uh, and, and a lot of, can I do this? Is it okay? Is it yeah. okay? But now they run in and it's like, what are we going to do today? I think we should do blank. Yep. And that was my, that's my goal. Like, that's what I want to hear. Uh, yeah. that's the, exactly the shift that, um, I was focusing on when I made that change. Like I wanted children to not come in and ask what I have set up for them or right. you know, what ideas I had, because when they do that, even if you think back to like watching them experience those things, like you said, the kids were happy, they were okay, but mm-hmm. they experienced it in almost a secondhand way, like a yep. once removed way. It wasn't mm-hmm. the depth mm-hmm. and the ownership in the, the, the connection and the engagement that you see from a thought that was originally there. It's like mm-hmm. it is a different sort of learning, a different sort of play. And it's that whole body infused, downloaded into my spirit learning that you yeah. don't get when children are just like, oh, look what Miss Kissa or Miss Keisha set up for me to do yeah. today. Let me go look what they learning. did. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Look at their ideas. Their ideas are great. You know, it's, it's really not about that. It's about us providing the space, the time, the materials and the trust and allowing the children to give birth to these amazing ideas. And that's what um, I think is the hardest part for some, but the most rewarding and magical part once you get over the hill. Yeah. Well, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know about so the hill. I could tell. We need, to, you're like, we oh, need to talk about the hill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tumbled down it a couple of times and uh-huh. it, was, it was very interesting. <laughs> um, when my mom was a teacher for 25 years and I talked to her a lot. And this is very interesting for her because she's like, oh, my heart can't take the things that I'm seeing. (laughs) But um, I was telling her about just my reflection over the last year. And she said, you know what that was? That was deconstruction. Mm. Whenever you start a new thing, you know, there's a deconstruction process and, and you have learning curves. And so all the things that got messy and where you felt like you were falling down the hill and and what's wrong with you, is this right? Are you going the right way? That was all you deconstructing all the things that, you know, all the ideologies that were with you for decades. Yeah, yep. Because even though we're moving fast towards the goal, Mm It, yeah. uh, you know, we, we still have to re- do the healing in mm-hmm. the, re- mm-hmm. the unlearning. And I love your mother's word, the deconstruction, mm-hmm. because that's what we, that, that, that's what we, what, what's always been done. Right. Yep. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yep. I absolutely love this conversation. <laughs> and, and what I think is so inspirational about it is that there are people out there right now who have been doing it a way that's been been serving them okay like the kids are happy the kids are okay yeah but they're gonna hear something in this conversation that sparks maybe could spark their change you know yeah could spark their change so how could they get in touch with you because when they're getting ready to do this change they might need some support and guidance from someone who's going through it (laughs) right now so yes where can they find you where can they find your website whatever whatever you got give it to us Okay. Our main platform is Kid Crew Adventures on Instagram. I use Facebook under my name, Kisa Marks, but it's really a copy and paste. Everything that I put on our Kid Crew page on Instagram just comes over to my personal page because that's all that's important to me. My life is just not that interesting. So (laughs) (laughs) what do I do for a living? And that's it. Some of us, our our hobbies are our career, you know? Yeah. We, we yes, just, that's it. We, yeah. People say, oh, you're a workaholic. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, not at all. So I do plants, people, and um, plants, people, and, and pets. And all of them you're going to find on Kid Crew Adventures. So I, I, it's all the same for me. All the nurturing, everything is all related. And so all of that will be found on that one page.
really, really great documentation of your process. So tell us again, your Instagram, where everybody can find that. It's kid crew adventures on Instagram. All right. Kid crew adventures on Instagram. Thank you so much, Kisa. And I look forward to continuing to watch this journey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. All right. Talk to you later.